What's going on? Hey, <laughs> guys, welcome back to the Kempire channel. Look, apologies for being a little tardy for the party. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> apologies look when you're doing a live show sometimes last minute things happen when you're live things aren't working lights aren't going on so of course i'm here though i'm here for our final final recap of the real housewives of beverly hills season 13 okay the final 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 like the final 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 are you going to miss it? I thought it was actually a really good season. Was it their best season? I wouldn't say that, but it wasn't a terrible season. We have, we are experiencing, we are literally in the middle of a terrible season for one of these franchises. <laughs> oh, hey, Potomac. Okay. So in comparison, no. And look, pr production and the network does not believe that this was a lackluster season for them because the ratings for Beverly Hills has stayed consistent all season. And I'm just talking about the live ratings. We're not talking about the plus threes. We're not talking about streaming. We're not talking about DVR. They are still doing very well. And I do think that we have at least a decent cast. <laughs> Look, you all have your opinions on who should go and who should return and all that other good stuff. Look, we will, we will only know until we know. And after the reunion, that's usually, a, that's when they figure out who's coming back. All right? I already told you what how I feel about Kyle, but we'll get into it. We'll get into it because part three of the Royal Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion is all about Kyle Richards. <laughs> and her sister, Kathy Hilton, makes us a surprise appearance. Not so much of a surprise for us because we were told right after they filmed the reunion that Kathy would, would be making an appearance, which led me to believe that maybe possibly there was a conversation that was had during the season. But apparently not. Apparently not. We're going to unpack all of that and so much more in our final recap of season 13 for the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Baby, won't you listen to me? I got that flavor. I know you're dying to feed. I ain't no dancer. Just got some hip in my feet. Now throw your hands up. Ooh, you bring the lighter. I got the fuse. You make a fire I'll add the fuel Follow my lead Just watch the shoes Gotta turn the heat up To get this Cool Welcome back to the Kempire Channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. As always, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget you can also hear our live recaps and special episodes on the Kempire Podcast. While you're there, don't forget to give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. Okay? All right. All right, shout out to everyone watching on Twitch, Twitter, behind the scenes here on TikTok. Let's get into it. So at the top of the final part of the reunion... We have a, a an ongoing battle between Sutton and Kyle. As you know, they've had their issues and their friendship stuff, but it feels like we go we move on very quickly in this moment, which is good, but at the same time, it didn't feel authentic. Anyone else? It felt like we kind of rushed through their issues and and they were very forgiving, and I'm okay with that, but it has to feel like natural. It didn't feel natural to me in that moment. Because Sutton at the top of this, this reunion says to Kyle that you have been relentlessly mean to me. And Kyle's like, no, I haven't. Kyle felt like she expected more compassion from Sutton, especially because Sutton has gone through something similar, like the situation that Kyle went through with, with her friend Lorene that passed away. 
So she felt like Sutton would be a little bit more kind to her during this time. She also didn't love all the questions about her marriage. And um, she's Kyle asked her for, for examples. And Sutton says, you know, I, I'll say what Denise Richards said. Watch the show. Watch the show. I mean, look, I don't, I do believe, here's the thing. Here I go twerking on a fence, but you look, I do it religiously, okay? I see where Kyle is coming from. But I also see where Sutton is coming from. Do I think that Sutton or Garcelle were the best in handling the whole marriage questions? No. But again, we are we are on a reality show. The pop, not just the paparazzi, but there have been a lot of blogs during this time talking about the marriage. And Kyle is always the first one to tell people, you know, tell your truth, tell your truth and and be a mini producer. So I can see why Ky, uh, Garcelle and Sutton are like, well, tell your truth. But if this is really your friend Sutton, don't you sort of handle the situation a little bit with more sensitivity? Do I think that Sutton did? Mm, she tried to, but then you know, had, you know, we had Garcelle over here. Well, she's talking about your marriage. Let's not hem and whore about about what you're 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 talking about, Sutton. But they move on really quickly in this moment because it looked like they were taking lead from Andy because it's like, can we move on from this? <laughs> And then Andy says, maybe we can hug it out. So they have this awkward hug. I don't think it was awkward. It was awkward because, you know, Sutton's naturally awkward. But if you pay attention to the early scenes, you could see production and the editors are letting us know that something's off with Sutton. She doesn't look well. She's sort of like a little jittery. You could see it in her face. Not sure what it is. We found out later, we talked about this on Tuesday Takeover, that Sutton says that w what she experienced was um, dehydration, exhaustion, you know, the Hollywood speak <laughs> for mind your business, something happened, I don't want to tell you my, my, my real issues. But could it have been dehydration, exhaustion? Yes. She also said that she had bronchitis. And some of you were like, where was the cough? Well, <laughs> look, come on now. <sighs> we're going to talk more about that in just a second because I'm on the fence uh, here I look, I am on the fence. Go figure. Because the timeliness of this is interesting. However, if you see and you paid attention to the early few minutes of the reunion, you can see that Sutton did not look well. She did not look well. You could tell that there was something off. All right. I say all that to say Sutton and Kyle hug it out. Did you guys notice Erica and Dorit's faces when they were hugging it out? At one point, I wish I had a straw here. <laughs> but we have we have um, Erica going, you know, sipping her straw and then making a funny face. Look, Erica had a good time at this reunion, probably because she was not in the hot seat. And I've said this the entire season. What I've enjoyed about Erica was this fun, goofy, you know, just what we liked about her in the early years. But then, of course, we went into the whole she wanted them to apologize because she won appeal and appeal, you know. Uh, no. We're on appeal for legal reasons. And then we then it, re it reminded, reminded me who exactly she is, like, in real life. And then I was just like, uh, are you guys watching Better Don Blonde? I have not watched one episode. It's, I think it's only, like, a couple of episodes, though, right? Or is it done? I don't know. You guys will let me know. Are you watching Better Dawn Blonde? Was it any good? Is it worth watching? Eh. <laughs> Look, eh, I saw the first couple of minutes and I said, oh, God, here we go with Mikey with the dramatics. Stop it. <laughs> look, 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 stop it. Lies! The lies! Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, guys, if you're just joining us, we're talking about the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Delon, thank you so much for the super chat. Delon says, it was boring without Sutton and Garcelle. I'm seeing that a lot. A lot of people are saying as soon as Sutton and Garcelle left the reunion, it felt like the energy shifted. It felt like it really wasn't interesting. But I, I say this, to, I say all that to say. I think it's partially that, but I think people also needed Sutton and Garcelle's commentary when it comes to Kyle's marriage and the Morgan of it all. Because no one was willing to go up against Kyle. Luckily, we did have a couple of moments where Crystal was like, because when asked, you know, how did everyone feel about this Morgan relationship? Did anyone think anything? And no one would say anything. And then, you know, Crystal, who's normally cricket, raises her hand. Well, I did. And I like the fact when she was asked about, you know, are people in Beverly Hills scared of Kathy Hilton? And she spoke up. So, look, I like to give credit when credit is due. 
Cricket stood out in this scene. Look, look, look. Cricket was here. <laughs> I'm playing Cricket. You you did what needed to be done because honestly, you saved part three. Was it the best of the, th of the of the three parts of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion? No, but at least you stood up. At least you said something. I mean, we need a little bit more of that in, in the new season. And I look, we don't need everyone to be crunk. We get it. There always has to be a Cynthia Bailey. Cynthia, we say that with love because you held your position and you, you reminded us why it's important to have someone that's sort of that even balance energy. But don't forget, one of the great things about Cynthia Bailey, when I say Cynthia Bailey, Cynthia Bailey gave us good confessionals too. Like, do not sleep on Cynthia Bailey's confessionals. All right? <sighs> Jasmine says the cricket was crooked. And come on, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Shady, Shady Katie. Here goes Shady Katie. Get it, cricket. You know what? Would y'all behave yourself? Cricket just disliked the video. See? Cricket, I didn't, I, I mean it with love. I mean it with love. Ow, ow. Girls Club is, is agreeing with me. Girls Club says, you better twerk on that fence, Campfire. I'm right up there with you. See? I mean, look, I hope this, this, this fence can hold us. Look, look, look. look. I'm not a light boy. <laughs> Anyways, okay, back. I, look, the fact that I'm not, not excited about recapping Beverly Hills this season says to me they did the right job on how things were edited. All right. All right, before we get into the nitty gritty of this reunion, because I'd much rather talk about what's been playing out on social media. If you follow me on TikTok, TikTok folks, y'all better follow me on Instagram, YouTube, because um, we don't know if, if TikTok is going to be around in a, a few weeks. So make sure you're following me on other platforms or you're going to miss out. <laughs> right now we're live on YouTube, we're live on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, but we're also, we're also going to be on Instagram, so be sure to follow us there. Anyways, I say all that to say, I'm still enjoying what we have. And one of the things that I posted on TikTok yesterday and now on Instagram was an interview. You know Nichelle Turner? Nichelle Turner is a journalist from Entertainment Tonight. And I don't know if you, if you recall, Nichelle, the last time she was on Bitch Stash, the podcast, she spilled some tea. I can't remember what tea she spilled, but she spilled some more tea this week about Anna Marie and how editors pretty much saved her this season because you may recall the rumors. We heard that the group got on Anna Marie about uh, eight and a half for those that don't even know who I'm talking about. Damn. Got on her about those problematic tweets from her husband, Marcellus, and her following Candace Owens. Well, take a listen to what Nichelle told, told uh, the Bitch Sash podcast. Wow, but okay. okay. A little bird told me. It was, it was not Garcelle. I will say this plain and screaming from the rooftops. Garcelle did not tell me this. Apparently, there was another conversation cut out of the season that um, did not make Anna Marie look good at all. Oh. Um, and I, th I think the editors were like, this girl, we can't have someone that just is so hated and so bad. We got to help her in any way we wow, can. Wow, because we they've let so much slide. I can only imagine. It was not good. Do you know what the, it, in what realm? I believe it had something to do with um, Candace Owens. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> oh, God. Mm. <laughs> Sidebar. Speaking of social media platforms that we might need to leave, um, you know, Don Lemon was supposed to have his new Don Lemon show on on X now, you know, formerly Twitter. And now apparently it's been canceled because his first interview was with Elon Musk and Elon Musk basically did not like how the interview went. And I guess he didn't like being challenged in an interview, especially a man that claims to, to love free speech and basically tried to silence silence. Um, Don Lemon, but Don Lemon's, I'm going to release it on YouTube. <laughs> so be sure to follow me on YouTube. If you don't follow me anywhere else, follow me on YouTube, me and Don Lemon. Okay. Anyways, I say all that to say, so here's so, I, the rumors that we were going to hear about this, you know, problematic tweets, the transphobic tweets about her husband and, and Anna Marie's, you know, uh, following Candace Owens and things like that. Because a lot of people are like, I thought we were going to hear about that. A lot of people are wondering, why exactly was Anna Marie given a diamond this season? All right? 
And here's the thing. I'm also hearing that that wasn't the only thing cut out. So I'm understanding that editors, you know, they choose to focus on what they want to focus on. Do I think they threw her under the bus with the esophagus situation? Yes, I think that they did. But this is what happens when you sign up for reality television. You can't control the narrative. These producers, network, and editors control the narrative. So apparently they cut out, they didn't only cut out that in regards to eight and a half's storyline. They cut out her mother passing away and that journey. So as you saw, they brought it up during the reunion. I'm under the belief she didn't want to talk about it because it's her mom. It was hard to, 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 to talk about something like that. So I understood. But then I was still wondering, like, why did they make her a full timer? Well, apparently she did open up about her mother dying and her mother's passing. And they didn't include it. I think if they included some of that and some of her personal story, I think people would feel a little bit differently about Anna Marie. Do I feel differently? Well, here's the thing. Here I go twerking on the fence religiously. I do think that maybe we all would feel a little bit differently about Anna Marie if we got more of her personal story. I do maybe agree with the editors in, <laughs> in regards to if they had included the whole Candace Owen of it all inclusion. Yeah, the fans really would have been like, cancel her. We don't want to see her anymore. They're already doing that. But Anna Marie, you did not do yourself any, any help by going on social media and leaning into the esophagus situation, slamming these anesthesiologists, making it more about anesthesiologists versus nurses. You did not help. You did not help us lean away from that focus. So from what I'm hearing, allegedly, they cut out the Candace Owen of it all. <laughs> Thankfully. No. <laughs> and they also cut out the, the, her, her mom passing away and things like that. So apparently that was a big part of her storyline and it was not included. Again, explains to me why. I think Anna Marie's coming back next season, y'all. Because I feel like the producers feel like she needs a fair shot because they did not give her a fair shot by not including, including her full personal story. But now I understand why she was given a diamond. I understand now why, why she was given a diamond because she did give you a full story and they didn't include it. But maybe they're going to include more of her story next season. She might get a better edit next season. Who knows? But this is why I always say be just mindful of how you harshly judge these folks because we are watching an edited show. We are watching an edited show. We have to keep that in mind. And context is important. Context is important. I say all that to say, you're welcome, Anna Marie. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so Kathy Hilton. Kathy Hilton makes an appearance at this reunion, all right? She makes an appearance at the reunion, but we knew this already. She comes out. Kyle apparently gave Kathy a crystal as well. I got my crystals. Y'all always know I got crystals around me. So Kyle has her crystal. She gave Kathy a crystal. They're in a better place. Um, Kathy is kooky as all get out. Kathy's like... She doesn't watch the show. She watches the clips and she watches Watch What Happens Live because it goes by so fast. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Okay. Oh. So th these little funny moments we can appreciate about Kathy, but it gets dark really quickly. It gets dark really quickly. So then they talk about Erica pointing out that there are some women in Hollywood or amongst this cast are scared of Kathy and... She has the, the keys to, to what these people want, the parties and, and the events and the, the whole social stuff. Kathy was sort of like, um, that's not true. I sent that clip to my friend <laughs> and the friends probably were like, oh, that's silly, darling. And probably like shaking in their boots, shaking in their boots. Look, Kathy, we're not delusional to when it comes to Hollywood. We may not be in Hollywood. We may not be in these circles, but we've been following the gossip for a very long time. We also understand how how it works in the entertainment industry, but also amongst the, you know, the moneyed <laughs> folks. OK, you do have influence. Are you fully aware of that influence? I think so. <laughs> I think so. Literally, Crystal's is like, yeah, everyone is scared of Kathy. <laughs> and I appreciate Crystal in that moment because Crystal again also is in those circles. She is a socialite. She likes being a socialite. And her saying that put her put, puts her at risk. Puts her at risk. But I appreciate her saying yes, that does happen. 
I do believe Kathy know, knows her power. Um, Donna says Kathy knows her power. Yeah. Elle says Kathy is a gatekeeper. I think she wanted to downplay it because in those circles, you don't talk about it. You don't talk about it. It's all about the look. It's all about those things. <laughs> El Michelle says, exactly. El Michelle says her friends were probably like, is this a threat when she was sending Kathy sending them the video clip? But Kathy loves to say that. She loves to say, oh, I was talking to my friend. I sent this to my friend. She downplayed it. Again, because in those circles, you don't talk about your power. It's all about in the look. You know how black mamas would look at you when when they want you to stop doing something in public? It's sort of like that, but different. <laughs> it's sort of like I'm trying to break it down for our, for our community. It's it's like that kind of look. It, I believe it. Jean says that Kathy's a full-time housewife slash socialite. So, so, uh, socialite. Uh, she's fully aware. But th that made me a little bit more like, oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, but wait a minute. But wait a minute. We're not done. Kathy found it laughable. Okay. However, Sutton... In that moment, like I said before, leading up to this moment, we see different moments with Sutton where she doesn't look well. Well, all of a sudden, Sutton has like a little bit of a shaking and she kind of falls back in her chair. And of course, the paramedics who are on hand, they come to check out Sutton. Garcelle's like, we need to get help. Um, Anna Marie's trying to step in. Anna Marie at one point says, we need to call 911. The paramedic was like, I don't think we need to call 911. <laughs> I'm like... Here's the thing, though. Shout out to all the paramedics. Shout out to all the healthcare professionals. I, I, look, and I know we don't, we, look, we, I know y'all don't like Anna Marie. But in that moment, are we listening to Anna Marie or are we listening to the paramedic? I would probably listen to Anna Marie because we don't know what exactly is happening here. Her blood pressure is pretty high. But they're, they're saying that they don't feel like you need to call 911. Mm. Okay, though. So as the paramedic is checking um, Sutton and her vitals and things like that, Dorit and Kyle seem to be very focused on, like, is she okay? Is she all right? And then we have this moment. Did you guys... First of all, Erica and Kathy are having their own little conversation. Initially, when Garcia was pointing out, well, she was feeling hot this entire time, Kathy makes a, a snarky remark. Oh, you're 49, Sutton. And of course, you're going to ha have hot flashes. It's, she's like, it's bound to happen. Okay. I think she didn't know the depth of what was happening. So maybe she's thinking, oh, she's having a hot flash. Who knows? But then it gets a little weird because... Erica and Kathy are having like this com conversation about Christmas and did you take down your Christmas trees? Uh, <laughs> Y'all are terrible. <laughs> Y'all said the paramedic for sure. Okay. Um, Dina says they were staff medics. Yeah. You look, yeah. Okay. Let me see what you guys are saying. Uh, Ebony says healthcare professionals go into work mode when needed. Um, <laughs> look, 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 look. The French first says, I'm, uh, still listening to the paramedic. All right. Uh, CM said the paramedic said no ambulance, but go get checked out. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm not a paramedic. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a healthcare professional. Maybe they don't want to call the paramedics because that really is for dire emergencies. If you can get someone to the hospital without the uh, an, an ambulance, I'm guessing that's more ideal. Okay. Um, hold on. Hold on. Uh, Regana says the paramedics ended up agreeing with Anna Marie, though. Okay. Okay, look, doctors will also disagree with each other. Nurses will also disagree with each other when it comes to care plans. I just felt like, I was like, oh, that stood out to me. Anyways, so as they're checking Sutton out, the paramedics and Anna, Anna Marie, we also have um, Erica and Kathy having this conversation about Chris, almost as if like they really don't care. I don't know if it's they didn't care. It, it did come across as heartless. OK, and I was just like, is Erica, it seemed like Erica was trying to make conversation because remember last season, Erica and Kathy had a very awkward situation with the whole what happened in Aspen situation. So maybe it was awkward and they wanted to have like just 
try to make small talk because they really couldn't do anything. Look, I'm trying to see both sides of the situation, but it felt insensitive. It felt insensitive uh, in that moment. So Sutton is escorted back to her trailer just to, to kind of figure out what, what they're going to do. So they decide that they're going to go to the hospital. If you were here for our Tuesday takeover, we played a clip in a recent interview that Sutton did and talked about how Garcelle was left with her, was with her during that entire time. Very sweet moment. Very, very sweet moment. I, lo I love to see it because so many people don't believe that this is a real friendship between Garcelle and Sutton. There, this is a real friendship, and these are the moments that you see it. These are the moments that you see it. Okay. So they get back to the reunion, but before they get back to the reunion, we had this little snarky remark. And I don't recall if this was in the Bravo live version, but I watched the Peacock version this morning. And the Peacock version is um, is not is uncensored and extended. So there are little things like I, if I didn't pay attention long enough, I'm not sure if this was included in the live version. But we got a little bit of a clip. Take a look at what Kathy said once Sutton was off stage. One more time. Let me play it one more time for you. Um, it's a good way to get out of being. You see, because she, Kathy claims that she was going to come for Sutton. And when Sutton was being checked out, Sutton said, you know, I was scared. And that's what stood out. I was like, wait a minute. Was she really scared? Because remember, during the season, Sutton did admit um, her issues with, with Kathy because Kathy did not like the fact that Sutton didn't, didn't defend her in the press. And when Kathy said that, I was like... Oh, wait a minute. I saw another, a whole other side. Was I blinded to the side? Have I been caught up in the fanfare when it comes to Kathy Hilton? No. We said this during last season that do I believe that Kathy is a dark spirit? <laughs> and why the, the toxicity between Kathy and Kyle is real? Yes. And this was one of those moments. This was one of those moments. And I was just like, so did Sutton really? I don't think Sutton faked it. I think Sutton really was scared. I really think that Sutton was scared and maybe that anxiety became physical for her. Because remember, they didn't know Kathy was coming to this reunion. They found out shortly before Kathy came out. Donna says that's why Sutton freaked out. I believe it now because I heard that as a rumor, but actually watching it play out in part three of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion, I was like, oh, Sutton, you should have carried yourself some, some Labrador right. This is good for psychic attacks. Look, 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 look. I'm just saying, this is why I, I always tell you content creators, make sure you cleanse your space. There's a lot of energy being sent your way, intentionally and unintentionally. Do I think that Kathy did something? I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, uh, I, 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 2910 says it was in the live version. Okay, I don't know. It's hard to tell what the little things that they add in the um, extended version are, but I don't, re I didn't recall seeing that. I mean, she whispered it, but still, we caught it. <laughs> Look, we caught it. Ooh. Well, e exactly. K Baby says, well, she still can't fake. High I don't think she was faking it. I think she, re I think Sutton really had a physical reaction to her anxiety and fear of Kathy Hilton. And I know Kathy, when she hears this, she's going to be like, oh, that's silly. That's silly. Is it? <laughs> Look. Mm, Shireen says, proves the power of Kathy. Whew. All right. Anyways, guys, for those that are just joining us, this is our weekly recap of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And I want to talk about better help because as I told you guys before, my mission for this year was to get into therapy and I finally gave therapy a try and I think that you should as well. I really loved my experience with better help because it was just easy. And you know, that's a theme that I've been telling you. I need life to be easy and I know that's important for you guys as well. You need life to be easy and nothing was easier than working with better help. And I love the process. They made it easy. They made it efficient, and I love the fact that before you even select your therapist, they're asking you questions that you probably wouldn't even ask yourself. 
You probably wouldn't even ask yourself, and they do it for us and by asking those questions. And that helps you kind of weed out the whole process of finding the right therapist for you. Because I always say for therapy, it's like finding a, a it's like finding a soulmate. It's like finding a partner. Sometimes you have to go through a bunch of frogs to find the right one. So BetterHelp is trying to do that without having to do it too much. Because even with a you know a survey and things like that, it, it becomes hard because personalities and things like that, you just never know. You just never know. So I'm excited to be partnering with Better help. All right. So today's live show is sponsored by our friends over at better help. And as I said to you guys before, there's, a, there's a lot of us that need, need therapy, but also need something that's quick, easy, and efficient. Okay. All right. Um, so before I even get into that, learn, learn, oh, hold on. There we go. All right. Learn to make, make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Kempire today to get 10% off of your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Kempire. Again, that's BetterHelp.com slash Kempire. More information will be available in the description of this video or audio if you're listening to this. So shout out to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's show and sponsoring the channel again. We appreciate them. All right. <sighs> so much more to unpack. <laughs> and when we talk about therapy, th this is why therapy is important. Okay. This is why therapy is important. All right. So we had that disgusting moment with, with Kathy and, and what she was saying. Again, I do believe that Sutton had a real medical emergency. Was it induced or worsened by Kathy coming out? You never know. You never know. Her blood pressure was pretty high. Krista was like, yeah, the blood pressure, my, my blood pressure was that high when I was in Spain, which is scary, which is scary. All right, moving on from there. Um, Kathy says that Kyle isn't afraid of anyone when they were talking about Kathy and Kyle's relationship. She said, including you, Andy. And he was just like, why should she be scared of me? Mm-hmm. Look, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Kathy says that, um, that Erica, because, you know, Erica made that comment about how some of these ladies are scared of Kathy because she holds the keys to that social society. And Kathy says, well, you know, Erica has never been, you know, that type of person, which is interesting She's like, which she knows, which she knows. She's like, even when she was married to Tom, she's never really been interested in any of that stuff or scared about that stuff. But Crystal, as I, as I mentioned to you guys before, agrees that Kathy is a powerful person in Beverly Hills, including scaring the women on this cast. Okay. Um, they do mention Lisa Renna. Apparently Lisa Renna sent flowers and a lovely note. Kathy says she wouldn't get into what the note said. Um, but she sent a, a, a note to, to um, Kathy. So they seem to be in a better place. Do you think that opens the door for Lisa Renna to return? I don't think so because Lisa Renna has said some damning things about Bravo since her departure from the show. And this season alone proved that you didn't need Renna for an interesting show. At least I don't think so. Uh, Marigold says, <laughs> Marigold says she knows another dark soul when she sees one <laughs> in regards to Erica and Kathy. You know what? Y'all are terrible, but truthful. Just saying. All right. So they talk a little bit about that. Kathy said that she never thought um, her relationship with Kyle was over. She said she can count on one hand the amount of fights that have been this serious with Kyle. All right. But apparently they got better. Their, their relationship got better. Um, because of their, um, their niece's uh, wedding, you know, Whitney, Kim's daughter's wedding. So that's where they started. That's where they saw each other for the very first time. They were in Aspen together. She said she, uh, Kathy got really emotional speaking of, she was, I guess she was in getting her hair done or something like that. And she overheard Kyle saying, oh, that, that's my sister, um, Kathy. So she got really emotional. Sometimes it's hard to decipher what Kathy is trying to say. I think she has a difficult time articulating it. I think she got emotional because she she does truly love her sister. She truly, you know, probably missed having interactions with her, her sister. Look, no matter how you feel about them, no matter how you feel about Kathy and her control and the toxicity of their relationship, do I believe that there is some love there? Because, yeah, I do believe that there is love there. Do I think that the toxicity between these two between these two is over? No, I think this is part of the reason why they avoid certain topics. 
This is why they avoid certain topics. All right. Um, then they move into the addressing of the Mauricio of it all. Okay. But before we get into the marriage stuff, they talk about Mauricio and what he wrote in his book about Rick Hilton. So Mauricio in the book said that Rick Hilton didn't pay him. Pay, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Really didn't pay him well. And he said he felt like there was a lack of professional love. Is he saying that he wanted Rick to, to treat him better because he was family? I'm not sure what professional love means. I didn't read the book. <laughs> but I'm trying to understand what he meant by professional love. It sounds as if he wanted to be a Nepo baby. <laughs> so Kathy explains, I guess, her understanding of what happened between Mauricio and Rick Hilton. As you know, Mauricio used to work for Rick. He ended up leaving Rick and starting the agency. Apparently, Kathy says that he also decided to take people with him. Kathy pointed out that he told Rick on a Thursday and that he was leaving on a Friday. I think it's important to know, and the real estate agents, please weigh in, because I know this from working in the temp staffing world. So I was very familiar. I didn't, I didn't specifically work in staffing, but I worked with staffing companies, and I understood the culture. In staffing, although real estate is different, but it's, it's still sales and things like that, you could be there one day and then gone the next if they decided they're, they're parting ways, you're not giving a, a week's notice, two weeks notice. It, usually it's like the day before. So that to me didn't, didn't sound like it was off. However, for those that work in real estate, you let me know. Is it normal? Oh, we're, we're going to give you two weeks. You let me know. All right. Um, so, so Mauricio had some gripes with, with Rick Hilton. Kathy wanted to talk more about it. She weighed in in regards to what transpired between them. Apparently, Mauricio told told Rick that he wasn't going to poach any of the staff. But apparently, Kathy says that he did take some. Kyle does not want to get into it because I'm sure Kyle does not agree with Rick or with Kathy. And if she gets into it, she's going to defend Mauricio and then things are going to get ugly. So I get it. She doesn't want to go in the past. She doesn't want to go in, in that way. I, I completely understand it. There are certain conversations that you know that you all just disagree on and you will never agree. So why go back there if we're trying to maintain at least a civil family relationship? <sighs> anyway, sidebar. <laughs> this is when we find out because this is when uh, Sutton and Garcelle are going to the hospital, but they have to still get their things because that was left on the couch. We find out that... Look, hold on, y'all. Merce is in the still. purse. <laughs> Merce is still in the purse. Still in the purse. Really? Merce is in the purse. And so, of course, Kyle is like, I thought we spread Merce's ashes. Crystal has a clear up. Well, no, she still had some more. Because there were also rumors, or I think there was like a blog entry where Sutton talked about how she spread Merce's ashes before. And in my head, I was thinking, well, maybe she had more, more, like she didn't spread all of his ashes. So I don't think that it was made up. Some people do this. And apparently Mercer's ashes were given amongst his friends and family. So, and apparently she's been spreading them wherever she can. And apparently she brought some with her to the reunion. <laughs> and it, Merce was still in her purse. Merce was still in Sutton's purse. Okay. <laughs> all right. Let me say thank you because we have quite a few super chats. Thank you guys so much for for the super chats. Don't forget, guys, you can also support the channel just by liking the video. And if you're listening to this, you can also support the podcast by giving us a five star rating and review. Let us know what you are loving about our podcast and special episodes that are available on the podcast. O'Shea, thank you so much for the super chat. O'Shea says, Kathy and Kyle are two sides of the same nasty coin. Crystal tried her best, though. Shame. <laughs> she did. She did, which I can appreciate. And maybe Sutton and Garcelle needed to leave so that we could. Damn. Sorry, Anna Marie. You still didn't even have a moment with with those two being gone. Not wait. Hold on. Not Crystal getting the getting the seat next to Andy once they left. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Julie, thank you so much for the super chat. Julie says, definitely Garcelle needed to be there to call out Kyle. Again, Kyle was producing the part three reunion. They, in my opinion, kept Garcelle out and kept her with Sutton. Oh, you think? 
I don't think so. I think I think Garcelle really wanted to be there for Sutton. Um, Angelica, thank you so much for the super chat. Angelica says, it wasn't a good look for Kathy. She gives mean girl energy. Agreed. Agreed. I definitely got that vibe. Delon, thank you so much for another super chat. Delon says, when Kathy did that, I believed Rena. Oh. <laughs> Tiara, thank you so much for the super chat. Tiara says, are Kathy and Evanna Pump friends? They're similar. I believe they are friends. I'm pretty 100% sure that uh, Lisa Vanderpump and Kathy are friendly. I don't know if they're friends. No, I think they're actually friends. L, thank you so much for the super chat. L says, in real estate, there generally there are teams, and I believe that Mauricio's team followed him and were not poached. Yes, because Kyle did say that under the Umancy group, which was under um, Rick Hilton's you know, real estate agency, um, he took his. they decided to go with him. But I'm sure he felt a way about it because maybe maybe some of those people that were under under um, Mauricio were some big sellers for for Rick. I mean, I think they're never going to agree. And I think at this point, everyone should just let it go. And I know they're probably mad at the fact that Mauricio talked about it in his book. That's his story to tell. That's his story to tell. I, I don't see anything wrong with it. We can disagree with it, but that's his story to tell. Again, do I think Kathy and Rick are innocent people? No. No. And God only knows how many people Rick poached in that real estate business over the years. Come on now. Can we talk? Can we talk? I will say this, though. <laughs> Every time I see uh, Mauricio doing some weird stuff on the on the gram or... Uh, doing Dancing with the Stars. Because the minute he did Dancing with the Stars, I thought I was the only one that thought that was so odd. Especially coming from just the, being a real estate mogul. They're not doing Dancing with the Stars. It gave very thirsty. It gave very like, I said, in my set, just on, on social media, I said, I need to just put a, a t-shirt that says, Rick Hilton could never or would never. <laughs> because I'm just sort of like, you have this big conglomerate, the agency. And you were doing Dancing with the Stars? No shades of Dancing with the Stars. Because apparently everybody in, re in Real Housewives or reality TV wants to be. So during our recap of Vanderpump Rules, we found out that Sheena was really upset that Ariana got Dancing with the Stars. Because that's something she always wanted. In this reunion, we found out that Kyle would have been, would have been, she was jealous that he was doing Dancing with the Stars. Because she wants to do it. I'm actually surprised that they've never asked Kyle to do Dancing with the Stars. I guess she's really not the queen of Beverly Hills. Wow. <laughs> Look, wow. Uh, Dina says he's still a reality star, but still. He's always sort of been a reality star on the left, but I get it. Now he has his own show. I don't know. I just feel like when you reach a certain level... You just you look you dancing with the star. Remember when dancing you dancing with the stars used to be that place where people that were in obscurity went. Is it still that? I don't I don't even watch that. The ratings for that haven't been great in the last couple of years. Who's hosting it? Is Tyra still hosting it? <laughs> right, I, I agree, Elena. Elena, Kyle would be perfect with Dancing with the Stars, especially how she's working out and stuff like that. Elsie says Kyle can't dance. Well, a lot of people that go on that show can't dance. Uh, Danielle says, hold on. Danielle says, can anyone explain why they would do this, including you, Kempire? I, I can't. I, I can't explain. <laughs> I can't explain. Uh, hold on. Uh-uh. <laughs> Sherry says, I want Kempire to sing. Uh, scissoring, scissoring. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. I'm saving that for when I go to Nashville. When the Camp Party After Dark show comes to Nashville in July, I'm going to get my vocals together. I might even bring out a guitarist. And, and I might have a full song. See you in Nashville, <laughs> July 11th. Don't forget, guys, we're coming to Boston first, May 30th, bringing the Camp Party After Dark live show there, May 30th. Then we're going to be in Nashville on July 11th, then Atlanta the next day on July 12th. And then we're coming to Seattle, August 30th. And I know you all have been asking, when are you coming to my city? Well, we're trying to confirm. Look, we're trying to confirm. So stay tuned. Stay tuned, okay? Uh, but if you are in those cities or neighboring cities, you want to see the Campfire After Dark tour, be sure to get your tickets today. More information will be available in the description. 
Okay. Let me say thank you. We had a couple more super chats. For those that are just joining us, we're talking about the Royal Housewives of Beverly Hills final part of their reunion. Kay, thank you so much for the super chat. Kay says the two guys from Million Dollar Listing, not the brothers. Oh, uh, wait. Did they do um, Dancing with the Stars? Again, I don't understand why anyone would. Anyways, anyways, I guess people that do reality TV are usually pretty thirsty, and this is why they're doing it. Rita, thank you so much for the super chat. Rita says, Kyle's crying and whining is getting on my last nerve. Yeah, because this is the second reunion where we're getting, <laughs> where she's doing it. Back to back reunions of Kyle and this constant crying and. A uh, woe is me. But do I believe the cheating stuff? Yes. Look, yes. And apparently Kyle has believed it too. Apparently Kyle has believed it too. All right, let me get back into my sequence of events. Okay. All right. So we already we already talked about that stuff. So then we have the segment towards, you know, the middle of this final part of the reunion where Kyle talks about her marriage. They play all of the, the moments of Kyle's marriage over the years. Actually, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I mean, look, they've been together for almost 30 years. But Andy brings up the fact, well, there have been cheating rumors since season one. Damn, Andy, cold-blooded. <laughs> but there have been. There have been. On the show and off the show, there have been rumors. All right? So they play back all of those moments in regards to their relationship. And she says that something that Mauricio did that made her lose her trust. She did not tell us what it is. When the, when the fan question was asked, you know, for her to spit it out, she was just like, I don't effing have to. And look, she doesn't. These, all of these reality stars choose how much they want to share. And look, that's their right. That's their right. However, what becomes annoying for the fans watching it, it's sort of like, we don't get what's happening here. It's frustrating watching you talk about marriage troubles and we we want to root for you because if he cheated on you, F him. <laughs> but you just sort of this blanket statement of he did something to break my trust. Well, word on the street, he's been doing that. <laughs> so I think, I think Mauricio cheated again. And maybe that was the final straw. Maybe it was the final straw. Maybe she didn't have solid proof before. Maybe she has solid proof now. Because they do talk about the rumors since season one. And she said, Andy asked a really great question. Did it chip away at your trust? And she says that it did. Here's the thing that's confusing to me. And I'm not, I've never been married. I, don't, I haven't been with someone for 28 years. If someone, if there have been cheating rumors over the years, again, you don't have solid proof. But should that chip away at, at your trust? If you've never had solid proof, should you have stayed in that relationship if you did not trust that person? For me, it, it leads me to believe the rumors that she's known all these years, but she's turned a blind eye. I know she's denied it, but it's though if you really did not trust this person and these rumors have made you feel insecure. I don't know if I could be with that person. This person's making me feel, and look, I know there are plenty of people that very much like Kyle will stay in a relationship despite trust issues. But then I'm sort of watching this and I'm like, so every rumor you sort of believed, you may have not 100% believed the rumors, but you sort of believed them and it's chipped away at your trust. All right. It's chipped away at your trust. She also talks about deleting um, Mauricio's DMs. So apparently there was a point where Mauricio did not know about DMs, so, but she did, and she would go in, and she would see that these, these heifers, I really just can't imagine in, my, in, in, in my, my mind that women online see that Mauricio's married and is in his DMs flirting with him. I don't know. I just can't fathom it. Like, you're going out. of It's one thing if... You meet someone in, in a bar and you don't know and they don't have their ring on or whatever, but you are going out of your way to go in his DMs and flirt with him knowing that he has a full on wife and kids. Okay. I'm not judging, but I'm judging. <laughs> Alrighty. 
All right. So, but she said she used to delete and block those people until he discovered the, D the DMs. And she talked about how he would be, you know, following people. She made it seem like he didn't understand what he was doing. She was like, you don't know how this make makes me look by you following everyone that follows you and liking pictures and things like that. I mean, look, he wouldn't be the first man, heterosexual man that, that has done this on social media. All right. But do I know exactly what may have broke these two up? I mean, look, Kyle, I don't know. Here's here are a couple speculations. Either she caught him cheating and she had more solid proof than she's ever had before, or she's finally she's caught him cheating again. And she's like, after losing my friend, I'm in such a different space. Maybe I might be moving on to the lady pond. Scissoring. Sorry. <laughs> maybe she's in a different space. Maybe because her kids are grown up and Portia's about to leave the house. <laughs> Literally what I said during the premiere of the season finale. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Maybe that that is what it was. Maybe that's what it was. And I told you before, I do believe that they were having marriage troubles. I just felt like the timeliness felt orchestrated. But I wouldn't be surprised because everyone has said that Kyle is that calculated. And maybe this was the final straw. She was just like, I found him cheating. Look, look, I found him cheating. I have I have solid proof, you know, off the strength of my friend Lorene. Look, Lorene not being here. Life is too short for me to continue being in an unhappy marriage. Or, look, 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 look. Or it was cheating. Or maybe it wasn't cheating. Maybe it was stealing. <laughs> maybe he did something with the money and she figured it out you think maybe maybe that's part of the reason why Kyle is telling us oh you know I don't I, I usually just sign off on things that did not that did not protect um Teresa that won't protect you either okay maybe Morgan will protect you <laughs> All right. So then they talk about the whole Dancing with the Stars stuff and how she would be jealous. That's something that she w wanted to always do. Whatever. All right. Then they also talk about Mauricio and him holding hands with Emma, his dancing partner from Dancing with the Stars. Erica chimes in. She's like, everyone on Dancing with the Stars dances suggestive. That's just how dancing is. She's like, I wouldn't have cared. <laughs> Come on. She's like, I wouldn't have cared. I feel like there's always rumors about partners and celebrities during Dancing with the Stars. So I didn't read too much into it. I think Kyle is reading much into it, partially because of history with Mauricio. But at this time, they weren't even together. People were thinking the dance that he dedicated to Kyle was sort of like an FU. Kyle says she didn't like it. She didn't like it. <laughs> uh, look, as, thank you, Sarah. Sarah says, I like these conspiracy theories, Kempire. Uh, maybe it will make Kyle say something, anything. I'm just saying, okay, look, let's continue. So cheating, possibly, for Kyle and Marisa and why the relationship ended, and maybe this was the final straw. Or maybe something financial was happening, and she noticed it. Maybe she got a little wiser. Remember, her friend is Sutton Strack, and I know they weren't in the best place. Doesn't mean that she couldn't call Sutton up. Who's your um, accounting, uh, forensic accountant? Mm, see, Angelica. This is exactly what I'm thinking. Angelica says, you're right, Kemp. If he was in charge of the finances, maybe he took something without consulting her. And doesn't mean that she doesn't have the resources. And Kyle, if you ever watched this, <laughs> Kyle, if you ever watched us, go talk to, to Sutton. Because I think part of the reason why they're delaying a divorce is because they got together when they both had nothing. And their money probably is very mixed and mingled. They've got to figure out how they're going to separate their assets. And Kyle wants to be able to take all those Birkins with her. And she will. And she will. But she doesn't want to live her life on a budget. She doesn't want to have to go get a business manager. Exactly, Norma. This was funny when Kathy pointed out that she felt like something had changed with Kyle and Mauricio about three years ago. 
You notice how Kyle tried to downplay the timeline? Because I know the timeline probably says more and has all these, you know, people sleuthing, trying to figure out what was happening about three years ago. What was happening about three years ago? Steve C says, or transferring transferring resources. <laughs> Mary Jane's baby says Mauricio stole money. I don't know if he stole money, but here's the thing. Mauricio's also in a, a legal battle. We, we can't get into the legal battle just because I haven't fully read up on it, but I know he has a lawsuit that he's facing, a multi-million dollar lawsuit, okay? I'm wondering if he's moving money in a way that she became aware of. Allegedly, I, like this is all speculation. I don't know this for fact. However, <laughs> I'm starting to think. I'm starting to think it might have something to do with financial, more so than cheating. I'm actually believing it's it's more financial, and and the trust was broken there. Okay, so I'm wondering if it had something to do with financial, and she found out, she figured it out, or maybe he mentioned it. Look, look, look. Maybe he mentioned it to her, and she said, "You know what? Let me look into this more." Norma says that Mauricio has proven not to be trusted time and time again. And the fact that that Kyle probably wasn't paying attention to the finances before. Mm. Mm. Julie, thank you so much for the super chat. Julie says, Kempire, how long before Kyle comes out? <laughs> All right. Thank you for the segue. So Kyle is then asked about Morgan Wade. And Kyle, you're hemming and whoring about this conversation when Andy asks you a yes or no question are you guys together she was like in what way <laughs> I'm like what in what way so she denies that her and Morgan have anything going on she says that her she, she loves Morgan as a friend I love the fact that Crystal asked her about the timeline of doing that music video do I have a picture of the music video I know I do don't I have it somewhere oh here it is all of this very suggest. Here's the thing, Kyle. You don't look great in this moment, and I'm so glad. Shout out to the editors! Yay! <laughs> Hercules, 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 Hercules. Because they call her out as a liar. <laughs> Lies, the lie. Because she tried to downplay the timeline. She was like, "Oh, you know, she didn't know about the creative when she got there." <laughs> Kyle Kyle Richards did not know that they were going to ask her to be suggestive in a music video. I don't know if I believe that. I don't know if I believe that. Do you guys believe that? I don't know if I believe it. I don't know if I believe that. But Crystal pointed out, she's like, so when exactly did you do the music video? So Kyle says she did the music video before the news came out that her and Mauricio had split. So when that news came out, your kids didn't know. Right? Am, am I getting the timeline right? Your kids didn't know that you guys were splitting. You then filmed that scene with, your, with the kids to explain what was happening. However, there were rumors about you and Morgan. So you do this suggestive video knowing that there are troubles in your marriage and you haven't even talked about this with the kids. They also talk about that awkward kiss during the season. And she explained that Maurice, the reason why she was she sort of pushed... Mauricio away was because he knew that there were issues and they were trying to they were trying to figure out how they were going to talk about this with the kids. And that's why she was just like, he's trying to make seem make it seem like everything is OK. Kyle, and then they played the behind the scenes at the music video. And literally, Kyle says in in that music video, hold on, because let me, let me, I wrote it down. She says, hold on, where is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She says, let's give them something to talk about. Okay. So this is why I kind of give you the side eye, because if you care about your children, and I'm not saying that she doesn't, this is why it's so odd, the timeline of it all, of you in this whole situation doing this music video. I don't, I feel, to me, I don't care about you doing the music video. You could play in our faces all day, every day, but to play in the faces of your children feels disgusting feels opportunistic exactly why um howard stern called out that scene with you and the kids he he also felt like you were just using the situation to um 
to be a reality TV star in gold. <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> Elsie says Kyle is a liar. <laughs> I'm starting to believe it. Look, I'm starting to believe it. All right. So they talk a little bit more about Morgan and Morgan being on the show and, you know, fans accusing Morgan of being a clout chaser. Andy points out, well, I'm sure a lot more people know who Morgan is because of her being on, on Bravo. Kyle downplays it. Well, she was notable before being on the show. Ain't nobody here know her. <laughs> Can we go back to my other conspiracy theory? Can we go back to my member? If you've been watching our Real Housewives of Beverly Hills recaps, then you know my other conspiracy theory was that this was a plot that Todd set up. <laughs> no. And, and when I say Todd, a publicist. Someone thought, okay, let's put these two together. This will heighten Morgan's career. And it did because now more people know her and apparently maybe some of you are fans. I heard some some footage of her. I don't I wasn't impressed. And I'm a country music connoisseur. I love country music. I don't I don't I don't like her. Unless she comes out with my song and I better get um credit, um, Morgan. We were scissoring under the moonlight. And now everybody's talking. And I don't think it's right, but when we... <laughs> I swear I can sing. <laughs> scissoring, we gonna be scissoring under the moonlight. <laughs> Shout out to all the lesbians. Look, look, they're part of our community, okay? Shout out to the, <laughs> to the lesbians. And look, I've been concerned for Morgan because I know a couple of lesbians that got involved with, you know, heterosexual women that want to experiment and then they get their feelings hurt. And then, look, I swear, Nashville, I'm going to have my scissoring song together. I promise you. <laughs> look, I promise you. We're going to get that song together and then we're going to we're going to perform it in Nashville. OK, <laughs> let me go hit up some of my friends. We're going to work on that song. You heard it here first, okay? <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm going to get back into my songwriting mode. <laughs> Just say it. All right. <laughs> RZ says, you know you're wrong for this guy. <laughs> All right. I'm going to drop the call in link for our members first. And I'm going to continue with this conversation about the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills because I've been talking for an hour. <laughs> and I didn't even put any water here. Woo, woo, woo for me. Woo, woo, woo for me. Okay, let me drop the call in link for our members really quickly. For those that are listening to this you on the podcast, if you would like to hear our, our callers, you'll have to listen to it on YouTube because we don't include the callers there. All right, members, we're going to drop the call in link for you guys. If you would like to become a member, head on over to teamcampire.com backslash join. And you can become a member because this is not even one of the perks of being a member. There are all kinds of really cool perks that come with you come with your membership, but this is not one of them. Live chat, we will drop the call link for you guys, but let's get those likes up. We have over 1,200 of you here, and we're not even close to 400 likes. Can we get to 500 likes? And I'll drop the call in link for you guys to call in and share your thoughts on this season. The, this is the finale. We're not going to talk any more about Real Housewives of Beverly Hills besides maybe like news that comes out about it until the new season. Until the new season. All right. I know. Elsie's like, where's your water? I, f I forgot my, my coldest water bottle. It's probably literally like an arm reach away. Uh -uh. <laughs> K-Baby says we need a music video. You think I can get Kyle and Morgan to be in it? <laughs> I might do a parody. Stay tuned. All right. <laughs> and if you see anyone steal my song, you let them know. I ain't playing with y'all. <laughs> All right. All right, back to this, back to this. For those that are just joining us, this is our Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, our final recap for season 13. If you're part of the replay crew, be sure to let us know where you're watching from, your thoughts on the season, your thoughts on the reunion, your thoughts on what we said. What stood out to you? Be sure to let us know in the comments section. Shout out to our King's Guards for always holding us down in the live chat. We appreciate them so much. So don't forget to say hello, thank you, and engage, and engage with the rest of the live chat. All right? <laughs> exactly, Jasmine. Jasmine says, Kempire, make sure you get your credits like Candy Burris. I'm gonna work, I'm working on it. I'm gonna work on my scissor and song. Watch. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So they talk a little bit more about the Morgan of it all. Kyle is just sort of like, here's the thing. 
I don't know if Kyle is just leaning into the speculation because she loves to talk about the blogs and Instagram and really try to, you know, I guess she wants to be the sort of like, oh, you're just a blogger. But she's leaning into it. These pauses, these long, dramatic pauses, I believe that they're intentional. It's not like she didn't know that these questions were, were going to be asked at the reunion. <laughs> it's not like she didn't know that Andy was going to ask her this qu these questions. She knew. Did you think, do you think she really thought that Andy was not going to ask her about Morgan and their relationship? She doesn't deny that she might be open to a relationship with Morgan. She's like, she's in a very different space now. <laughs> she's in a very different space. Kyle, I'm not interested. I, I know the Bravo universe is inter interested in your relationship with Morgan that is the least interesting part of your storyline this season. I didn't care about your marriage troubles. I actually care more about your marriage troubles than your supposed relationship with Morgan because I don't believe that it will be long lasting when it comes to like a, 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 a physical romantic relationship. Do I think that you might have a friendship? Yes. But I don't care about that. All right. I do believe that the marriage stuff is real. But again, I feel like it's being strategic when it's being talked about. Honestly, I was so happy that we talked about this other aspect of your life. Not happy about what happened to you because I know it was traumatic, but I was like, oh, at least there's more going on with Kyle. At least this particular situation made a little bit more sense as to why Kyle is, ma are, you know, is making these changes and why it may have affected her marriage and her friendships and things like that. All right. Um, again, she wants to say Morgan was already notable. <laughs> Kathy weighs in on, on her friendship with Morgan. She says she really likes Morgan. I've seen interviews with Kathy. She says she thinks Morgan's very talented. She's very nice. I'm sure Morgan is all of that. Morgan is definitely all of that. Do we need her to come back next season? Andy even joked, well, maybe Morgan will be on, on stage next season. Do not even think about it. Unless she's performing my song, Scissorin, we're going to be scissorin. Unless she's performing that, I don't want to see it. All right? I mean, we just had a performance on the Miami finale. <laughs> so I wouldn't mind y'all perform my song on there. Y'all better give me credit, though. Okay. <laughs> so they end the reunion with the group reflecting on what they've learned this season. Of course, we don't have Sutton and Garcelle. I don't know why they didn't decide to take a group photo at the top of the reunion. They should always do that, especially for Beverly Hills on how Beverly Hills uh, reunion ended last year. It did not end well. I don't even think we had a group shot last year, right? But we almost didn't have a group shot if we had a group shot last year. So why not all reunions. Let's take a group shot at the beginning. Okay? <sighs> Not me producing a show. Look, y'all have years of experience. Okay, whatever. So Erica says that she's just happy to be okay. Erica was having a good time in this reunion. And look, good for you, girl. Look, I, I, mean, I get it. I get it. After the two years of, of what she's gone through, I get it why you're just happy that the focus is not you this season. All right? I mean, last last reunion, too, really wasn't the focus. You were you really weren't the focus either. So Dorit, she starts to talk about what she her reflection for the year. And then she's like, oh, well, let me start over. And then Andy pretends to yawn, I think. Um, and she's like, don't you dare. Well, then she says that, you know, she, she says when someone says that they, they they're her friend or they like her, she usually believes it. And what she's saying now is that she needs to be less naive. And Andy points out, so you're referring to the Garcelle situation. So she's making it seem as if Garcelle and the way that Garcelle feels about her, um, that Garcelle has been dishonest about how, you know, I thought we were friends and that we were in a good place. And she's like, she needs to be less naive. Girl, you are not naive at all. Because we could speculate on a bunch of things when it comes to you and PK's relationship and that burglary. But we won't because we've already done it. You need to be less naive. Okay, girl. <laughs> All right. So, Kyle. Kyle says, this is exact quote. She says, I will have my happily ever after no matter what. Because she thought that Mauricio was her happily ever after. <sighs> Still so boring. <laughs> of the, the three-part reunions, 
part three was probably my least favorite. I didn't love the Kathy of it all. I thought that this would actually be a sweet moment between Kathy and Kyle after what happened at the reunion last year. But it turned dark. And I look at Kathy Hilton, not differently, because I always thought that Kathy Hilton was one of those folks in Hollywood that is is devilish behind the scenes. Uh-huh. Ooh, April, April, this is the word. April says, blame the black woman when Kyle is right there. That part, that part. Let me say thank you because we had a, quite a few super chats and then we're going to get into some callers. SD Mac, thank you so much for the super chat. We appreciate your support. SD says, it's giving she tolerated the flings. See, SD, you and I usually are see eye to eye on a lot of this stuff. SD says, but a whole mistress got him twisted and she couldn't tolerate that. It's kind of given like the the uh, Wendy Williams situation. Remember Wendy? Wendy knew about uh, Sharina Hudson for years, allegedly, I'll say. Knew about Sharina Hudson for years. But it was only when he had a baby with her that she was like, I'm done. I'm not done. I know there are plenty of people that deal with that in, in their relationships. I couldn't deal with it. I'm sorry. I don't. I know people say that. And then when they're in it, it's a little bit differently. I just know me too well. I couldn't deal with knowing the fact. And look, there are a lot of gay relationships. So we, look, maybe this will be Kyle. <laughs> there are a lot of gay relationships that, that are like this where, but it's, 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 for lack of a better word, it's a lot healthier because they are more open about it. They're saying, well, no, we have an open relationship so you can go be with other people. So that's definitely a lot healthier than doing it behind someone's back and having a full on family. I don't know if that's what Mauricio but maybe maybe some of the messages allegedly that Kyle saw showed that he was in love with someone. Who knows? Dorit? No. Stop. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, SD Mac, for the super chat. Lip, in, lip injections. <laughs> thank you so much for the super chat. They say, I think Kyle's holding her cards close to her chest for the divorce settlement. Once she's got her coin, she'll spill the tea. Let's hope. I don't think she will, though, because remember, they have kids. I don't think she's going to spill all the tea. And look, do I expect her to? Not really, to be honest with you. She never really has. Uh, Mama Ellie, thank you so much for the super chat. Mama Ellie says, Kyle is going through a midlife crisis. Is that real? I guess it is real. I hope I never go through one. If you see me with a full-on hairline, then you know I'm going through a midlife crisis. <laughs> or just being facetious for my new music video, Scissoring. As NYC MP, thank you so much for the super chat. NYC MP says, I bet she signed something that implicates her. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute in regards to Kyle. V, thank you so much for the super, super chat. V says, hey, Kempire, thanks for keeping me company at work. Hey, shout out to everyone that watches us at work. I appreciate that. I do appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video <laughs> for those that are watching at work. All right. Uh, Zoe, thank you so much for the super chat. Zoe says, hold on, let me bring up Zoe's comment. Zoe says, Garcelle and Sutton leaving part three of the reunion showed how boring the show would be without them. They are carrying it on their backs, hands down. I mean, like, I know people like to downplay Sutton and Garcelle's um, importance on this show, but they really are. They really are very entertaining. I don't think it's just on them, but definitely um, very important. And them being absent in part three showed a lot, showed a lot. And this is why I always said, you know, when people were saying that they were doing too much, asking the questions during the Erica situation a couple of seasons ago, I was like, well, if they didn't ask those questions, that season would have been so lackluster because no one would have challenged Erica. No one would have brought it up. All right. <laughs> Pure luxury salon. Wait, so luxury salon. Do you provide what I need for a hairline? <laughs> Not the Jermaine Jackson give her. <laughs> Look, I am going to do it one day, even if it's just for giggles. I'm okay. Thank God I have a decent head. Thank God. Decent. Look, it's not perfect. And, you know, some people got perfect heads for bald heads. But at least I have a decent head. Um, but I would, I'd be open to trying it. Something that's temporary. I think it's funny. Then you guys can see how, what I used to look like with hair. Anyways. All right. Anyways, let's get to some callers. If I could find the callers. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> if you're a member of the channel, we've dropped the call-in link on the community tab. For those that are in the live chat, we will drop the call-in link for you guys once we get to 500 likes. We have over 1,200 of you watching on YouTube alone. Shout out to everyone watching on Twitch, Twitter, those of you watching behind the scenes here on TikTok. Those of you watching here on TikTok, keep tapping your screens, but don't forget to follow me on Instagram because TikTok, it will be no more. <laughs> 
I don't know if that's really going to happen, but you never know. So if you don't want to miss out or lose me, look, or lose me, follow me on YouTube, Kempire. Follow me on, on Instagram. All right. SD, thank you so much for the super chat. SD says, Dorit was talking about, about Kyle. Andy le- led her to, gar- to say Garcelle. They ain't slick. Well, you have a valid point. You have a valid point. I think it probably was easier for her to say Garcelle because Garcelle wasn't there. Mm. I kind of, look, I hope they get to a better place. I felt like in, in Spain, they did get to a better place. I hope Garcelle and, and Dorit can get to a better place if Dorit returns. Just say it. <laughs> All right. Uh, you guys are still stuck on the fact that <laughs> that Sutton might be 49. Is Sutton 49? Let's Google Schmoogle it and then we're going to get to some callers. Let's Google. Let's Google Schmoogle it. Because I don't remember. If Sutton is 49, damn. Take care of yourselves. Take care of yourselves. Uh, no, she's 52. I mean, three year, three year difference. She's 52. And she's a Virgo. <laughs> Shout out to all the Virgos. Okay. <laughs> Sutton is 52 years old. All right. All right. Oh, wait a minute. Rita, good point. Morgan Wade is 28 years old. Kyle is 55. Interesting. (laughs) Moisturize, everyone. Moisturize. And don't forget to wear your sunblock. And don't sit in the sun. (laughs) Sit for a few minutes and go inside. And stop drinking, drugging, and all that good stuff. All right, let me get to the callers because <laughs> this is awkward. All right, callers, please respect the timer so that we can get to everyone. Thank you in advance. Let me switch this out. All right, let me switch this out. And let me take that off. All right. Oh, Norma's backstage. Hold on, we're going to bring up Norma first. Hold on. Norma, what's going on? Damn you, Campire. Now I got to buy tickets to go to Nashville to hear the scissor uh-huh. song. <laughs> that will be fun though norma this ain't scissoring Woo! This is- <laughs> don't give me ideas okay <laughs> so I, I already got the line dance going in <laughs> i'm working on it y'all think i'm playing nashville y'all going no no i believe you I be- i'm just so jealous i, I must see what's going to happen uh real quick you know i might be the only hu- human on the planet that doesn't see problems with kyle like she doesn't affect me. I think she probably stayed with Mo because of the kids. Mm. Um, but I don't like him, especially after he did this little thing from his TV show talking about he was fucked by uh, Rick. Uh-huh. Oh, can we say that? Uh, and and it's you know I don't blame him for leaving. Mm. End of story. I don't blame. Him. I just think the way he's going about talking about it over and over again. It's just low, low class. And I think I agreed with the caller. I think that Dorit meant Kyle because she was mm. giving her daggers throughout the whole show. Mm. And every time Sutton was going after Kyle, Dorit was like, yeah, I think Dorit's hurt. I mm. think she's hurt because she felt left out. Mm. And um, I think that's it. I have nothing more. This ain't scissoring. <laughs> Woo! This is lesbians. Yeah. We go down, 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 damn, damn. <laughs> Okay, that's my sign to leave. Bye, everyone. Bye, Norma. <laughs> Norma's giving me ideas, but I don't want to, I don't, you know, Beyonce's serious about her copyright. Stealing. Uh, <laughs> Lies. The lie. I'm not playing with, I'm not playing with, with, with that, but that, that works too. That, that works. All right, let's get, let's get some more callers. All right. Rasani's backstage. What's going on, Rasani? Hey, camp. How is everyone? Hey, we're great. How are, how are you? you? I'm Okay. So, okay, I'm just going to go back to last week oh, okay. real quick because I didn't get a call in. I watched the replay. So I think like with like the old G's um, from all, across all the, fr- I'm sorry, not all, most of the franchises. I think this is a thing that happens. It's like um, they give so much of their, their lives, like, you know, Kyle and Candy with, you know, their family dynamics and what's going on with their family and the dysfunctionality of it Hmm. and when new people come on don't get me wrong i love sutton i love garcelle but they're not really talking about their lives they're Hmm. piggybacking off of them and it gets frustrating and tiring i mean i've seen nini go through it kenya 
um, Candy, Kyle, you know, you know, it's okay. Stop. Move on. With Mauricio, and I, I disagree with Norma, but I still love you, Norma. Um, I think it's uh, he wrote about it in his book because it was his biography. He wrote about it in his book, and if people are asking him about it and he shares it, then he shares it. And the thing was, it, it wasn't that the love. He was talking about the love that he brings so much business to them, mm -hmm. and a love. they were disrespectful and wouldn't give him his partnership. Mm -hmm. So... And I think Kathy's a B-I-T, and we can finish spelling, spelling the rest. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, son. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I think we also, I have to remind you guys, not only are we watching an edited show, you are wa what's edited, what's included in, in a person's storyline is not up to the housewives. It's up to production and even production, you know, say, say that they have no control in editing. This is up to these executives that are deciding what's included. As we mentioned earlier in this recap, uh, eight and a half, they didn't include her, mo her mother passing away. Apparently it was filmed. Apparently she had more parties that were uh, included, uh, that were filmed, that were not included during the season, allegedly, I'll say. And we also mentioned the fact that the, the group had a conversation about her following Candace Owens and, and Marcellus's uh, tweets, and that was not shown. So it's not up to the housewives, and I know people are like, she showed nothing, she's boring, blah, blah, blah. It's not up to them. They could have shown a lot, and we just don't get to see it. So just keep that in mind when you're judging these housewives, okay? Let's move on. Let's bring up Joe next. Hold on, Joe. What's going on, Joe? Not much. Okay, I'm going to throw a crystal word here. Um, I So my first point is, I think what happened to Sutton isn't, I, I, I don't think it's indicative of something psychosomatic, like, you know, reacting and being scared about Kat, Kathy being there and potentially coming after her. I think it's the actual being scared of what just happened to her physically oh. that she's afraid of because she doesn't really know what was going on with her right mm. so, 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 so 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 i think that's where her fear comes from that makes sense um and then the, the second thing about uh mauricio like i'm 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 with him if you're bringing in over 19 percent of the business mm -hmm. and you're not asked to actually be part of the partnership or have equity in it i understand him leaving but mm -hmm. i also understand um ricky's um standpoint that if he's saying like hey as long as you don't poach because typically in the corporate setting, like a, an acceptable grace period is between six, you know, six to nine months before you could start having people hmm. um, join you from leaving. So if you did that quickly, then that really isn't very professional. No. And I can't, and, and I might actually get a Nashville ticket so I can, you know, I, I can see you get your, get your song and get your voice together. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Joe. One thing I forgot to mention that I wanted to mention during the recap in regards to um, Sutton's medical emergency. Have you guys ever passed out before in public? I have. More than once. You want to know the times I've passed out in public? Okay. <laughs> On transportation here in New York City, I've passed out. I've passed out at a job interview. I was really sick that, sick that day, so I went to the doctor um, after the interview because I didn't realize how sick I was. Went to the doctor, passed out in the waiting room. I think that's the only time I've, I've passed out since then. So it is scary. It is scary. Just want to point that. Because then you get paranoid. You, you get paranoid that you're going to pass out again or you, you, you just don't know what's happening to your body. All right. All right. So let me, um, guys, we're almost at 500 likes. Once we get to 500 likes, I will drop the call-in link for the general audience. But we have over 1,200 of you watching on multiple platforms. So like the video. Tick, TikTok, keep tapping your, sc your screens. Um, Kim says, never passed out. Yeah, well, you don't want to. Cause, luckily, I, I didn't hurt myself in the passing of the outing. <laughs> um, so you, just, you could pass out and really hurt yourself. So it's scary, but th those pa those situations happen happened a long time ago, which is part of the reason why as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to make sure I, I drink my water. St hi stay hydrated, y'all. All right. Miss Bernice is back. So you're going to bring her up next. Miss Bernice, what's going on? What up, though? Happy Pi Day to everybody. It was Pi Day? Yeah, 314. Yeah, three, three Pi Day. Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, Kathy was brought there to double team with Erica to attack Sutton, plain as simple. Oh. And you didn't notice that when when Andy said, "Well, y'all can hug it out," and Kyle got up to walk over to Sutton, and Sutton could barely stand up. She has neuropathy. I mean, mm-hmm. poor circulation of the leg. Mm-hmm. She had been sitting too long under all that those hot lights, and she said, once they took her back to the to her dressing room, that she had eaten. So she had eaten. She was dehydrated, yeah. poor blood circulation, and her blood pressure shot up. Her blood pressure was high enough for her to her have a stroke. Or mm. so for for Kathy to say that. That was really classless on her part, mm. and it shows what type of person she really is. Mm. Okay. Okay. As soon as, soon as, soon as Garcia and Sutton left, the room changed from like it went from light to darkness. And if Kathy's going to be on the sh- next season, I'm not watching it. Mm. And you, you can, you can, you don't have to go watch Erica's show. She was being a spoiled brat. And it shows who she she ain't changed. She's still Erica. It's expensive to be in me. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, you ain't, don't even waste your time going to look at it. She had Mikey crying. Like, how are you going to have Mikey crying? Okay. All right. Thank you, Miss Bernice, for calling in. Okay, kiddo. Bye-bye. Take care. Uh, Mauricio, Mauricio, not not the Mauricio. Mauricio says the alcohol and no food does that. Too. Look, I like to be fair here, in in regards to everyone gets it here. It did cross my mind because there have been accusations that that Sutton likes to drink, but a lot of them like to drink. Is she, you know, doing it a little bit more than others? Name them. That what? Name them. Well, name what you em. did was ridiculous. Name them. Uh, not having. Name uh, well, be quiet. So, name. Ne- Oh, well, maybe. <sighs> um, so it did cross my mind. It did cross my mind. All right. Anyways, but you can get dehydrated for a whole assortment of things. Okay. All right. Let's get to some more calls so we can get out of here. <laughs> uh, O'Shea's backstage. We're going to bring up O'Shea next. O'Shea, what time is it in South Africa? It's very early today. It's just after eight. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's very early today. Um, I just have a few thoughts on Anne-Marie. And well, really, the hiring practices at Bravo, because all these things that she is, uh, you know, that she's guilty of. The new person on Salt Lake City is also guilty. Mm. Uh, also has, you know, very similar tweets and very similar following as well. So I don't understand. And this is not the first. This this goes on. This this has been going on year after year in the different franchises, and I don't understand when they when you see things like this how it's just like oh we we're just going to ignore it we'll see maybe it'll come up in the season maybe it doesn't like it's they edited this whole part out of her they've done it with jenny what's what is the asian person from salt lake city i forget her name a uh, jen jen uh, jen shaw no, oh jenny previous, jenny jenny uh yeah anyway. i mean but they do it time and time again and i'm like y- y'all need to do better really cutting it out and you don't even hold these people accountable mm. which is the other thing and I'm sure if she wasn't Kyle's friend or she was, uh, she, she wouldn't have gotten that treatment. They were very quick to shove Monica under the bus in the, of the show. Mm. And now that she's Kyle's bestie, they, they seem to be all edited out the whole situation and everything is all fine. But I don't know. But yeah, they need to, they really need to wake up with the HR at Bravo. <laughs> oh, I went over my time. That's my okay. apologies. Thanks. But no <laughs> thanks. problem. Thanks, O'Shea. Take care. All right, we're going to get to some more callers. But first, let me just say thank you. We had a couple of super chats. Uh, SD, thank you so much for the super chat. SD says, Dorit, oh, we talked about this already. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, Nisi, thank you so much for the super chat. Nisi says, Kyle's mantra has always been just be open and honest as she outed other people. But to say it's nobody's effing business, hypocrite. I mean, points are being made. Points are being made. Um... Rasani, thank you so much for the super chat. Rasani says, oh, an eight and a half was right. They should have called the ambulance with the blood pressure that high. It could have caused a stroke. I mean, look, just saying. They literally said that about, about Crystal. And Crystal says her blood pressure is as high as mine was in Barcelona. 
Joe, thank you so much for the super chat. Joe says, did you clock eight and a half? Nod as Kathy said, rumors um, surround high profile folks. I still think that Kai Mo split because of Mauricio's show and other business deals. We've seen him make decisions without consulting Kyle. Do you think that we will ever figure out what exactly is the real reason behind this breakup? And now I'm starting to lean more towards it was something bigger than cheating or he cheated in such a, a terrible way that she just could not deal with it anymore. She literally says that, but she doesn't say that was, that it was cheating. She says he did something that she just could not look past anymore. Okay. Look, okay. All right, let's get to some more callers. Live chat, we're going to drop the call-in link for you guys, but we have to make it quick because I got that kind of time today. Like, I have my own stuff to do. <laughs> I need to go eat something. All right, we dropped the call-in link for the general audience. Guys, keep liking the video. It's an easy and free way of supporting not just my channel, but other channels as well. We're going to bring up April next. April, what were your thoughts on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills Season 13 Reunion Part 3? Good afternoon, Empire in chat. I'm also at work but you know whatever <laughs> but um they made me agree with 8.5 that ambulance should have been called seeing that something did go in the ambulance so i would give her her tens on that nothing less or nothing more um and in regards to going through the midlife crisis you will go through it again because i know you're into astrology so um right now i'm going through my pisces saturn return and then like later when you get later into life i think i was looking up on google schmoogle it's like you're another saturn opposition pluto and neptune so whatever you didn't apply and learn during your saturn it's going to come up again later on in life so definitely you know you want to talk to your uh, astrology reader you know to definitely get some tips on that mm -hmm. um and i need kyle to just just be fully committed to being the villain and just own your story you want everybody to tell their business, but you want to hide bits and pieces. It's like either keep it cute and on the playground or just fully divulge it. And I need the read to just go away, but that's my time. Enjoy the rest of your day and bye chat. Thank you so much, April. Take care. Oh, that's your, you're right. I have to say I have had my um, birth chart read recently. I'm not in that space. I'm about to have a fantastic next 20 years. Just saying. All right. <laughs> Kristen's backstage. We're going to bring up Kristen next. What's going on, Kristen? Long time no speak. Yeah. I'm going to try and talk really fast. Okay. Um, so I think that in the beginning with Mauricio, when he was at Hilton and Highland, he was working really, really hard. I think he was bringing in 20% of their business. I think the fact that the clients felt more loyalty to him than to the Hilton family says something about the way they were doing business. And I look at how the Hilton family has behaved in recent years, and I can completely see how this very privileged and wealthy white family was taking credit for the work that a immigrant was doing and wanted to keep all of the money and not make him um, an equal partner mm. to them because he was never going to be equal to them in their minds. Mm. We can look at how they behave. And when, when the Hilton family believes that someone is beneath them, they're fully willing to put the etiquette and compassion they learned at Mar-a-Lago on display. See how Kathy reacted to Sutton having a medical crisis. So that's how I feel about all of that. And I just want to say the fact that Dorit is so willing to suck up to them and we see Dorit's behavior. I think that, you know, who you are friends with says a lot about who you are as a person and they're all painting themselves with the same brush. And Kyle... Um, if you don't feel like you owe us anything, if it's not if it's none of our effing business, then um, maybe just maybe you don't deserve that effing seven figure salary. <laughs> Thanks, Kristen. So, I'm done. <laughs> Take okay, care. bye bye. bye. <laughs> Love it when you guys call in. You tell it like you mean it. All right, Brandy's back backstage. We're gonna bring up Brandy next. What's going on, Brandy? What were your thoughts? Oh, hey, Kempire. How are you? I'm oh, well. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that I agree with all the other previous callers too. Dorit was talking about Kyle as far as that um, being naive about who's my friend because she know getting well, Garcelle is not her friend. It's not that much naive in the world. And I wish she would have said it to Kyle like, no, I'm talking about you. You said mm -hmm. that I exaggerated our friendship. Like, no, I'm talking about you. And I wish everybody would say the things like that need to be said on the um, cast. As far as Mauricio, 
he was irritating me all season when he got that confused, bewildered look on his face. Right. Like he act like he don't know what's going on. Like, <laughs> like I was He's so high. irritated. <laughs> like, what's wrong with him? <laughs> okay. Anyways, and then as far as Kathy, um, when she said she was gonna come for Sutton, mm-hmm. I wish Sutton was in a better physical state and could have sat on the couch because if anything, Sutton can go toe-to-toe with Kathy. Like, Mm. she's got all the money. And I do think that Kathy is the type of big sister that she wants Kyle and Kim to do good, but not better than her. So I think that played a part into her husband and Mauricio, too. Like, you know, they don't want them to do better than them. And since Mauricio left, it seemed like he has came up. Oh, definitely. Significantly. Yes. Definitely. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling in, Brandy. Thank you. Bye. I look, I love when you guys call in because you really make me think like, oh, you know what? I never thought about it that way. Like what Kristen was talking about in regards to the dynamic between Mauricio and Rick Hilton and the privilege of it all. I was like, oh. Points. Points are being made. Are we leaning more towards Mauricio's side in that situation? Which is fine. We can. We could twerk on that fence. All right, Wendy's backstage. We're going to bring her up next. Wendy, what were your thoughts on this situation? Hi, Campfire. Hey. How are you doing? Oh, well, how are you? I'm good. Um, so I agree with the last caller. Everything that she said, I was I was going to say. However, um, I want, okay, every time you sing the scissoring song, I am tripping out. And you had my son tripping out today because he was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, <laughs> Oh my gosh, I lost my train of thought. Oh That's my good. gosh. Okay, so Cal, it's time for Cal to go. Um, Kathy, I don't know why Kathy was there. She is a mean girl, and I don't think Kathy, who would Kathy be if she didn't have her husband? That's Ooh. all I gotta say about that. Um, because without okay, if, if Kathy's husband was to leave her, of course she would probably get alimony, a lot of alimony, but really, it without the Hilton name, who is Kathy? Okay. Um, and I just want to see better casting. I mean, I, I just need, I want Lisa Vanderpump to come back. Hmm. I would love to see Lisa Vanderpump to come back. And that's it. So have uh-huh. a great day. You Thank too, you Wendy. Much. Take care. Pie day. Pie <laughs> day. Happy pie day. Bye. All right, bye. I didn't even think about it until uh, Miss Bernie's pointed it out. Apparently, you can be, check your local uh, pizza place. You might be able to get some pies. All right, NYC MP's backstage. We're going to bring her up next. NYC MP, are you there? I think she stepped away. So we'll we'll go back to to NYC MP. All right, we're gonna bring up Delon next. Delon, what were your thoughts? Hi, Kim Park, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Oh, by the way, when you get some ass real, if you need some BGV, call me from the crowd, okay? Call Wait, if I need crowd, some, oh, oh, some background vocals? <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know, I got your center part for you. So okay, <laughs> noted. <laughs> Period, but anyway, since he's talking about the dancing with the stars, I think uh, Mauricio's partner is married to another pro because I remember she got proposed to on the show. Emma. Right. Yes. Oh. So I think I think her husband or something, his name is Sasha. But I'm not sure if they're still together or not. So that's some oh. cheetah look into for real, for real. But, and Erica talking about the dancing and everything. Girl, she was eliminated like third or fourth week. On her season, so she can go have a seat. And Kathy made me believe Miss Bubble Lip Lena because there was no reason to be a Sutton's neck like that, for real. It was very, very shocking to me. So I was like, Brenda told the truth with her line. Uh-huh. Like, oh <laughs> but, but, um, Sutton and Garcelle definitely with them leaving the atmosphere shifted like mm. in a bad way because crystal was looking scared at her own mm. um, and then she got first seat by default oh my goodness yes the first seat by default <laughs> <laughs> yes by default but i liked crystal this this part though she she stood up a little bit yeah we needed her to she said it with her chest she said it with her chest okay. yes all right delon thank you so much but, for calling in no problem see you when you get to nashville yes sir bye Oh, they got a divorce. Delon, they got a divorce. They divorced Sasha and Emma. Damn, they weren't married that long because I remember when they got together. Wow. Okay. Scissoring is backstage. (laughs) 
Scissoring. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm all good. Honestly, I feel like every time I make a live, I have to think of a creative name. Last time it was She by GNA. You were. <laughs> <laughs> That's still funny. <laughs> So I cannot wait. I, I'm very much part of the replay crew and I cannot wait until your London show. I need you to know I will be there. Perfect. Okay. I will be there with bells on. I don't know if I go alone or I force my husband, but I will be there. You so, can come so alone. It, it's it's quite all right. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people coming alone. Whoa, whoa, whoa to whoa, all of us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Those are the friendless empires. But <laughs> I, I'll, I'll be quick because I know my minute started. Okay. Um, effectively, I, I, I know you didn't watch it on blonde and i know you won't i did enjoy it i'm okay. not big on erica but I, I did enjoy it i liked it and what i like about um beverly hills housewives compared to the others is that when they have gay friends they're not the personality is not them being a gay friend it's mm. just their friend who is also gay and that's definitely what i get from erica when she's with her boys and, and i've noticed that a lot with beverly hills it's versus atlanta where they seem to be like this is my gay friend Where's yours? And they almost like have them as accessories. So mm. I really do appreciate that Beverly Hills doesn't make being gay a personality trait. Wow. But um, yeah, Kathy, I felt it was weird. I felt it was weird that she joined the show after having not been on the the the, the entire program, but she was at the reunion. But it's good to see. I like the drama, and I like that she gets Carl a little bit scared. Carl isn't <laughs> going anywhere, so I hope they add Kathy to next season. That'll be good. Oh, wow. All right, Cesare, thank you so much for calling in. <laughs> I'll see you in London. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Guys, we will be announcing our London show hopefully soon. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for, for that. We definitely will be doing a show in London. Okay? <laughs> All right. NYC MP, we're going to bring you up next. What's going on? What were your thoughts? Okay, so many. Um, thank you so much for letting me talk. This was driving me crazy. Uh, Anna Marie was driving me crazy. She is not. Here's what you do. Okay. Uh, Ms. Bernice was 100% right. She has some circulation issues in her extremities, plus not eating, um, hot lights. All this leads to, um, you know, an imbalance of dehydration, essentially. So when you stand suddenly, it causes orthostatic or can cause orthostatic hypotension, which means your blood pressure bottoms out. Oh. And then, yeah, so she just bombs out first. And then when you, she can get readjusted, that probably, she probably did pass out from that, like blackout from six of me. Um, but then when she was kind of coming to, the blood pressure will then rebound and go back up. What they should have done was check, uh, get, you know, let her, you know, relax, refine, check the blood pressure every five minutes. Um, and then it's, or another five minutes. And then if it's still elevated, check it, like, you know, put a cold pack, something like that. Because that's going to come right back down. If you give her something like too fast or too much of a reaction, it can cause an increase in anxiety, especially with someone like her. Um, so anyway, that's okay. Anna Marie was wrong still. Still. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so wrong. So we should, okay, anyway, and the other thing is Kathy, oh my gosh, I knew when she sat down, she's not here to support Carl. She's there to, to, to shatter Crystal, or sorry, not Crystal Sutton. And mm. that was so nasty when they were saying, and oh, the one more thing. Um, with uh, while Kyle, what Kyle said was so big she couldn't look past it. I agree. I don't think it was anything about affairs. I think she was used to that stuff. I think she was used to covering it up. But I think it's probably a norm in that society. I'm just guessing. Um, mm -hmm. But I think he, I, that big lawsuit that he's got going on. You know how she threw in? Oh, I just sign whatever he tells me to sign. I think it's okay. I think that was calculated. And okay. I think she said that because yeah, in her back of her head, she knows what's going on. And I bet you that he had her sign some paper and somehow got her netted into whatever he's going through or going through legally. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much for calling in. I wonder, so are we blaming Kyle for the reason why, or, or should we blame Andy? Because NYC MP brought up the fact that her, you know, Sutton standing up too quickly could have be the reason why her blood pressure dropped the way that it did. So are we blaming Andy or are we blaming Kyle? <laughs> Look, we're just happy that, that Sutton is okay. Hopefully long-term everything is okay and they didn't discover anything. Maybe it's just a momentary thing. All right, let's get to these last couple of callers. We're going to anyone else that calls in, we're not taking you. So we have Taisha, we have Dr. MP. Oh, oh we got a doctor. Um, we have Audrey, and we have Miss Bernice. We're not bringing you back up. <laughs> and Sir Capricorn. All right. All right, we're going to bring up Taisha. Taisha, what were your thoughts on the Brill Housewives of Beverly Hills final part of their reunion? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, what's going on? Oh my God, it's the first time calling. I'm so excited. Thank you for calling in. You're welcome. I want to say that I love um, that previous caller, Kristen Down, because mm. everything she said, I utmost agree with. Yeah. Um, Kathy is an elitist. She's a classist. She never really liked Mo. 
Now that not list toothless situation with Garcelle will forever be funny, but that's she's very surface. Mm -hmm. And my take on her being at the reunion, Kyle brought her in to go after Sutton. Mm. I hundred percent believe that. That hug was so fake, and Sutton knew it was fake. I mean, but what is Sutton gonna do? She's gonna sit down there and keep it going? No, she's gonna get up and you know hug her. No. But that's definitely the reason why Kathy was there because she was there and she gave nothing. She talked in circles. She wasn't really supporting Kyle. She didn't even believe Kyle when she said she wasn't even going to be with Morgan. <laughs> now, is Kyle trying to test the waters? Of course she is. Is she getting divorced from Mauricio? Yes, she is. She didn't do that before the camera started rolling. Mm. And we're just going to have to wait and see her again next season. <laughs> God. <laughs> 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 right. Thank you. Thank we you, Taisha. Thank you so much. Come Take to care. Miami. Uh, we're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> All right. I'll see you in Miami then. All right. Bye. All right. We're going to bring up Dr. MP next. Dr. MP, thoughts? Hi, Kempire. Hey, how and are hi you? to all your listeners. Um, I just wanted to say I'm ready to buy my tickets for the scissoring tour. <laughs> <laughs> Not the scissoring tour, okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, no, I just wanted to comment a little bit on the Sutton situation. And I feel like immediately when I saw her, I thought she had what we call um, a TIA. Like it's a transient ischemic attack. It's almost like a mini stroke without kind of making, giving the, um, having all the symptoms of the stroke. Oh. Usually there are no consequences, etc. But if somebody has that particular episode, they have to you know, watch out for an actual stroke. So, I mean, immediately when I saw her, the way she kind of lost, she was a bit, she felt a bit dizzy and she was shaking and her blood pressure was up. I mm. felt like, okay, maybe she had a TIA. And I think that's why in, or, uh, initially the paramedics were like, oh no, she's fine. Because normally there's nothing you can really, really do. Okay. You just allow the person to reset. But I'm happy she was fine. Eventually, I did not like the fact that um kathy and um was it erica were just uh, yes. kind of making fun of it i'm just, just like somebody could be going through something real and you're just out here thinking you scared them mm. <laughs> and they had that episode so that's all i wanted to say thank you thank you dr mp for calling in and sharing your perspective thanks bye bye I love it. Our audience is all, you know, knowledge and whatnot. <laughs> right. We're going to bring up Audrey next. Audrey, what were your thoughts on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion? Yay, because I have to get into a Zoom call from oh. my job. And like literally it, it just started. Oh, but it's okay because they're going to talk about whether I'm, I work in news in Atlanta, um, but I'm from New York. That's why it says New Yorker in Atlanta, ATL. I can't wait for you to come to Atlanta because I'll be there. July 12th. Um, to support you. Thank you. I just want to say thank you so much for mentioning the thing with Eight and a Half and the Candace Owens of it all. Yeah. Ugh, I just feel like, you know, maybe just because I work in news, it takes one Google search, producers, one Google search to see problematic tweets, problematic um, associations, whatever. I keep, and I'm gonna say this really quickly, I really do have to jump on this call, other call, but, uh, and maybe you can, you can do a deep dive with Layla and Grace Report and whatever with this. There's something going on with the black women that they bring on to these shows, mm. right? I think there's something, I always feel like, and I had this conversation with one of my friends who is an Asian American woman in uh, New York, and she's an anchor also in New York. Um, is that, oh. Oh, yeah, finish I want to thought, finish your thought. Because, because, um, because I always thought about like, what will Real Housewives of Seattle look like? Because when I was in Seattle, and I know you're going there soon, um, like, would it be an all Asian cast, cast, you know, whatever? I just think it's really problematic when they cast these black women, mm. and I really would like to see them do a, a thorough, in depth look into them. Make sure they're the right um, fit, ebony of it all with New York. Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like. Because just even living in Atlanta and and whatever, it's like I just know black women who would just be so good on some of these shows yeah. and be unapologetically black and not have all these problematic things in their background. And I don't think it's wrong with casting unapologetically black people for these mm. cast members who are not desperate and who are just about their lives and I don't know. I just think and it's across the board. I think it's it's with Jenny in Salt Lake. It's you know, like it's it's it, it takes one Google search 
and you can find the right people for these casts. So I just wanted to just say really quickly, I just really appreciate you mentioning that because that was really problematic for me because I always wondered why is she a part of this cast? She was silent through most of the reunion. She adds nothing to the show. And it's like, and that thing with her in, again, I'm going to say this, I got to get on this other call. I got to, I just want to say this quickly. Like, I really do think um, you, Layla, and and um, Grace Report should do another thing on this because even that um, exchange with she and um, Garcelle. Garcelle, I'm a black woman, you're black. Ooh, yeah. cringe. And as a black, and, and just in the, you know, shout out to all the, the listeners. As a black woman and in the black community, that was seriously cringe. It was yeah, like it a was. kitchen table moment. It was like, girl, I see you. And girl, I see you too. We see each other. You know, like yeah. that I think you guys should do a, a, a more of a deep dive on of what that actually meant. Mm. It was like, mm, I see what you're doing right now, girl. And that's not cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So anyway, I'll be gone. Go on that go. Zoom I gotta, call. I pitch the story for tonight. <laughs> but, um, but Kempire, congratulations to everything you're doing. I will be there at City Winery on um, Ponce and North Avenue in Atlanta. I will take you to Chateau Chiray if you want me to, but we're gonna do this Atlanta thing, boy. We're gonna be out there. So I'm excited for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, I'm sorry, Audrey. I took up a lot of time, guys. That's okay. I apologize. Let me go. That's okay, bye, Audrey. Audrey about to lose her job. She don't get on that Zoom call. All right, we're going to, uh, yes, guys, don't forget, we will be coming to Nashville on July 11th, and the next day I will be in the Dirty South, Atlanta, Hot Atlanta. So be sure to get your tickets, all that information, including our Boston date, which is coming up May 30th. And I'll be in Seattle on August 30th. All of those dates are available in the description. All right. Last but definitely not least, let's bring up Sir Capricorn. Sir Capricorn, thoughts and opinions. Hey, what's up, Empire? Um, I love August. She was funny. Yes. Um, let me just say, um, I, the insensitivity last night with Erica and Kathy, I was very... Well, Erica, not so much, but Kathy, I was very shocked by it because, I mean, technically, I mean, this is supposed to be your friend and you're like, you're going through menopause, you're 49, you're, it happens, like, it's like, that's, it was very cringy. And then the whole, them having the whole side conversation, like, um, how have you been? Uh, well, how was your holiday? Did you take your treat out? Like, your, your friend is over there going through something and you're just like, Oh, well, she's only doing that because I was about to come after her next and she knew it. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> it was just very wrong. Um, and I do I I do think like with Sutton and Garcelle having to having to leave, it kind of gave Kyle more of a way to wiggle her way out of stuff. Mm -hmm. Cause they would have held her feet to the fire more. Mm -hmm. And I wish Crystal would have been I mean, I wish Crystal by herself. I mean, I know sometimes it she, it takes the village, but I wish Crystal by herself would have been able to back up Andy a little more and been like, so Kyle, like, answer this question straightforward. She was pretty much dancing around the questions, like, yeah. when he's like, um, is, is, what's the relationship like with you and Morgan now, or you, do you see yourself with her? Like, and she's like dancing around and like, no, like, Kyle, do you see yourself in a relationship with this woman if you get a divorce? It's that simple. So I feel like she got away with a lot. She was able to wiggle her way out of a lot of stuff without those two being there to be able to hold her feet to the fire okay. and hold her accountable. All right. um, other than that, I feel like the rest, the third part of the reunion was kind of like, uh, they could have made it two-parter. Um, I I will say it was, oh, it was good to see Emery sort of support Sutton a little more, even though they had this whole, she was being supportive, even though she was, kind of loud and wrong at the same time but ah. it's just here at least be supportive <laughs> well technically <laughs> you know, look I, I agree i agree but technically she yeah. has taken an oath so if she was to just sit yeah. there she would be in trouble so yeah. then there's that all right all right yeah. sir capricorn thank, thank you so much for calling me. in yep all right Thank you all for calling. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for the super chats. DGF, thank you so much for the super chat. DGF says Kyle has still been making the same mean girl comments to ostracize Sutton as the uncool oddball that she made when Diana and Renna were there. And look, I also believe, I didn't really think about it because, you know, there, there are so many reasons why um, Kathy Hilton was there. Because, yes, do I believe that Kyle may have been behind Kathy Hilton coming there to come for Sutton? Yes. But I wouldn't put past production to do the same. I wouldn't put it past production. 
let's bring Kathy back because of how everything fell out. But now you guys are friends again and in fr and family again. Bring her back. So I do, be and they believe that it would be ratings gold. So I think it's a little bit of all of that. I know we give a lot of, you know, credit to Kyle for being manipulative and a producer. I, that would be perfect. But I also think that Bravo wanted Kathy to come back to sort of show resolve for what happened last season, to kind of conclude that part of the storyline, and also to get Kathy on their show. It's going to bring in some ratings, they believe. I say all that to say, <laughs> thank you all for being here for our final recap of the season 13, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. If you guys had to rate the season overall from one to 10, how would you rate it? I thought it was a solid eight and a half. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely a solid eight and a half. Was it a perfect season? Was it their best season of the last 13? No. But was it bad without Lisa Renna? No. I thought they have a good starting mark. Could they make a one or two cast changes? Yes, they could. But let's do it if you find the right people. Like maybe one of the fleeing 14. Sorry, Crystal. <laughs> Just saying. Anyways, guys, don't forget to like the video. It's an easy and free way of supporting not just my channel, but other channels as well. You can also take us on the go by downloading our podcast, Kempire, on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. While you're there, don't forget to give us a five-star rating. And don't forget, you can get some better help from our partners today for the live show, Better Help. More information on them is available in the description. Thank you to our King's Guards. Thank you to our channel members. Thank you to our subscribers. And thank you to everyone watching in the bushes. We appreciate you watching. Now like the video. I won't know. You will. That you did something good today. All right? I'll see you guys later. Have a great rest of your day. And Kyle, go live your best scissoring life. You both got some best life. Yeah. You both got some of best life, yeah. It's something you and me, oh. You both got some of best life, yeah. Jumping, flexing, I know. I just want you. It's something you and me, oh. You both got some of best life, yeah. What's on my best life, yeah You broke what's on my best life, yeah It's something you and me, oh You broke what's on my best life, yeah Jumping, flexing, I know I just want to know Something you and me, oh You're both what's on my best life, yeah You're both what's on my best life, yeah You're both what's on my best life, yeah Something you and me, oh You're both what's on my best life What's on my best life, yeah Yeah, what's on my best life, yeah Something you and me, oh Yeah, what's on my best life